View. Now, the Department of Arts and Culture recently welcomed a court ruling in favor of Miriam Makeba's grandchildren and her foundation around the rights to her music. In October last year, a Siandisa Music filed an application to interdict Makeba's grandchildren, Lumumba and Zenzile Lee, from acting as the proprietors of the intellectual property rights without approval. Sianda Music is the assignee, it's called, of all Miriam Makeba's intellectual property rights. So this leads to a broader issue, the, the issues of uh, management of music rights, management of uh, music companies and the artists themselves. And the minister is saying it's a thorny issue to discuss. We're joined by an intellectual, intellectual property and copyright lawyer, advocate Ryan Tucker. Thank you for being with us, uh, Ryan. Uh, Thank you on, for having me. on this specific case, any thoughts? Uh, we, we're going to talk generally, of course. Um, just what I've heard, I haven't had a chance to read the judgment. I haven't had access to the judgment today. Uh, what I understand is that it was decided by the judge on a technical point related to the Trust Property Control Act, um, as it probably relates to the, the trust mm. or the foundation of, the, of, of Maria Makeba. So I haven't had a chance to actually go into the minutia of the case and the details thereof. Um, so if we can perhaps discuss more general... Well, well sure, general the, the, the general issue is um, are music management companies unscrupulous in South Africa? Let, let's start there from, from your experience. Um, I think first of all let's perhaps uh, discuss the terminology. Um, uh, music management companies, are you talking about managers of... Mm. Artists, well, well or this, are you talking this was about touted recording, as a recording companies? This was touted as a music management company, Siandisa Music. So, so it was a music company that assigns uh, the intellectual property rights to Maria Makeba's music. So, so yeah, um, what I understand is that um, a, a false license agreement or a fraudulent license agreement was signed um, by Maria Makeba and her. Uh, granddaughter at the time, or mm. uh, one of her um, family members, um, and that was the basis upon which the court found that um, that uh, Siandisa w w was not entitled to actually uh, the intellectual property and mm. also to other issues relating to Miriam Makeba's, um, uh, her image and her being uh, incorporated in the Hall of Fame. Mm. So, so the issue and, and the, the arts and culture minister was talking about it was just uh, this, this fractious relationship, I guess, because you have artists maybe when they're young and they're not famous, they, they can sign away their rights. Maybe they're, they're old and, or, or they're deceased and, and it becomes an issue with the grandchildren and, and the management company. So forget this uh, specific case. But based on your experience, what is going on out there? So yes, certainly, I think that um, a lot of young um, artists who are setting out are desperate to sign with a particular management company in this circumstance or a recording company which has 360 degree deals or whatever it might be and they're very anxious and very keen to get on board and they don't necessarily understand the terms and conditions that form part of that agreement whatever mm -hmm. it might be this might be advantageous or disadvantageous depending on you know the the party involved in many instances I've seen and I've been involved in litigation where um, certain individuals or artists have actually been their their you know their rights have been del deleteriously affected mm. or have been affected negatively um, by the company that they put their their heart and soul into and really believed what they had to say. Um, they sold them the dream of becoming a music, mu musician and becoming a, a famous artist. And later on down the line, it's not necessarily the case. Usually, I, I would presume that fine print is in favor of, of the music company. Well, definitely. Um, they have probably teams of lawyers, some of the larger companies, teams of lawyers working on their side. Whereas the artist himself or herself does not necessarily have the access to uh, uh, an intellectual property lawyer, a copyright lawyer, a music and entertainment specialist, yeah. which is definitely to their detriment. A and that's what you need. Is, is that the advice? Read the fine print, get, get lawyers if you have to, 
but you're a poor struggling artist, exactly. so it's very difficult. It's a catch-22 mm. situation. It really is. Um, how, how do we get um, artists who are initially struggling, who, who need the financial uh, uh, boost uh, that they can make from their art form, mm. um, and can we protect them adequately up front? Wait, wait. I always recommend that, sorry. No, I sure. always recommend that artists should come to an attorney, um, especially one who's, who's versed in intellectual property and copyright law, in order to put their case forward and to make sure that the agreements are actually, um, you know, balanced. Yeah. Are, are there agreements where maybe the artists, uh, things are okay while they're alive, but it doesn't protect their families when, when they're dead? It's hard to kind of think of, of that future as, as well. So that really brings up a technical issue, uh, a technical issue between authorship and ownership. We all know that, um, you know, the, the artist may be the author of his or her compositions, um, but ultimately that might be assigned to a company like a recording company or man management company or licensed mm. in a way that negatively affects the artist. He or she may not get the split that he or she wishes. So if we compare the initial artist who's just starting out 18 years old versus the Madonnas of the world who are well established, yeah. the splits are going to be completely uh, you know, swung in the favor of the more established artists. Also, um, with regard to, to authorship of sound recordings, um, it, just because you are the person who's making the sound recording doesn't necessarily mean that you are the author of that sound recording. The, if, if, the, um, if there is a, a, a publishing company or a, a production company or a management company in this situation who is actually responsible for the making or, or the, 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 the bringing together of the funds for the creation of that sound recording, that entity or that individual will be the author. And ultimately, sure. if it's from a technical perspective, the author is the first owner. That's the, 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 the fallback position. So if he or she or it is the owner, the rights that flow from that ownership are really in favor of that individual or that entity. Which shows how you can get yourself into a legal minefield. From your perspective, when it goes to court, do, does a judge who sees a very exploitative situation have to stick to the agreement? Or is there any scope to say, look, I'm sorry, this, this was unethical, this was uh, entirely unfair to, to the artist and, and their talent? Definitely. I mean, we have, we have um, the appellate division's case of uh, um, Sunshine Records, which deals with the situation where an unreasonable or a series of unreasonable terms were incorporated in a contract. And the court took that into account. And I think general principles of contract come into effect now as well, is that if there's some sort of constitutional issue, if there's some unreasonableness in that contract or illegality or something to that effect, certainly that can be brought up in litigation later so on. So some protection. We've run out of time, but Cabinet approved a policy to guide legal reform on intellectual property. What, what, what reform is needed in your mind? Well, I think there's, there's, there's a, a need for drastic reform on multiple levels. I think, first of all, if we, if we, look, at, um, if we look at the digital age, I don't think the current Copyright Act deals adequately with, with Intel, in, well, with uh, digital intellectual property rights. Um, I think that that's a very huge thing that we need to look at. Um, I think um, other aspects of copyright law needs to be looked at as well. And we do have um, recent bills that have been proposed by the DTI, but I, f I feel that they fall short um, on many general levels. I, I, I think it's beyond the scope of this discussion. Mm. Okay, but, but we need radical re reform. Well, this has been fascinating. It's given me some insight into what musicians could face uh, legally. Thank you very much. Uh, unfortunately, we do have to leave it there. Advocate Ryan Tucker about music, intellectual property rights. We take a short break. We'll be back. Uh, stay with us on The Full View.